Hey TNLC, I wanted to share another video with you on some of the ways that I am personally thinking about how to be a better Christian when it comes to discrimination, when it comes to racial injustice and some of these social issues that we are continuing to face and, and sometimes finally are overdue facing as a nation. Uh, I, in the first video, I talked some about some of the language lessons that I've learned. In the second video, I talked about um, some of the ways that I'm trying to make sure that I deal with my heart in that I'm not letting uh, anger and hostility and bitterness and sin creep into my heart and let that change and transform and let that be the director of my actions. But I want the love of God to cast that fear out so that I can live and move and, and speak in a way that reflects the grace and mercy of God. I want to I want to continue to to destroy a dividing wall of hostility, not allow it to be built in my heart or the, around me. And, and that's a little bit of like the, the questions that I want to ask um, you because well, or the questions that I've been asking myself because I really have been thinking over and over again like, okay, but I really want to make real change. Like how do we actually do this? How do we, how do we not just have these moments and then they pass away? Uh, I've heard some statistics that, uh, that you know, I think it was something like 35% uh, of people responded in one way uh, in a survey maybe four to five years ago, and then like 57% were now against a certain kind of behavior now, and statisticians were saying they've never seen that big of a swing, and so I think there's a lot more awareness. I think there's a lot more understanding. I, thought that, I think there's a lot more listening and, and, and trusting the experience of people who have a different background than us, and that's a really great thing because hopefully that leads us to have a, a more understanding um, perspective and heart. And, and when it comes to not just issues of, of race and different skin color, but when it comes to, to politics and economic diversity, uh, we're, we're all different people. We come from different backgrounds. I was having a conversation um, with someone who was in construction uh, a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about, well, you know, this job is hard. And he's like, man, I can't imagine what your job is hard. I was like, your job is hard as well. But we rarely seek to understand the experiences of other people. And so I've been thinking about kind of two levels that I might be able to approach this. Uh, and, and the first is on a really personal level. Uh, and, and it's by asking these questions. What am I creating and what am I allowing? What am I creating and what am I allowing? One is um, intentional, um, one's active, and one's passive. And I think we get situated, um, or I think we, fall, we find ourselves kind of falling into one or two categories with our behavior and kind of staying there. We might look at our lives and say, I'm not creating, uh, I don't say racist things, um, I don't, you know, I don't yell racial epitaphs at, at people. Um, even when I'm at home, I don't secretly say them under my breath, you know, like things like that. Like I'm not creating that, but that's a really good first place to start. Am I creating disparity? Am I creating indifference? Am I casual in my language, in my description? How funny do I think that I am? Like, what if we just for like at least a couple weeks, maybe a little longer, what if we just put a moratorium on trying to make race-based jokes. I'm just, you know, just a thing to offer. Like maybe that's not the time or not the thing that we actually want to be creating. What kind of thoughts, what kind of beliefs am I creating within my home with, with my wife, with my daughter? For me, that then, then extends of what am I creating within our church, within our church staff, because I'm responsible for creating. So I've got to ask that question. What am I creating? Not just am I not being racist, like that's a great minimum standard, like not racist. But uh, would, if you've seen a lot of this as this language has started to come up online, it's the goal is to not not be racist. The goal is actually to be anti-racist, which I think is really helpful language because it's a little more active rather than the passivity of, well, I don't do that. But again, asking this question, what am I creating? And the second question, what am I allowing? So let's say I don't speak uh, in any kind of derogatory racial language or, or, or gender language, but when I'm around people and they speak about it, I don't say anything. Well, this becomes a much harder thing to tolerate. 
Uh, and this is, I think, where a lot of the issues, a lot of hard work, a lot of uncomfortable conversation is going to start having to take place is what are you allowing? What are you allowing people to say around you? And that's what we have to evaluate as well. And this might be confrontations with family members or very direct conversations with people on social media, though you might want to move to the DMs or text messages or phone calls because, again, I don't think a comment thread usually produces a, a ton of change. But I think those are very two personal questions uh, at the personal level to ask, what are you creating and what are you allowing? But I also think we have to ask those questions from an organizational standpoint. I think we have to ask them from more than just an individual standpoint. I believe that it is only through the life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ being applied to the individual's heart that someone can actually change from, a, from, a, from an old, stoned heart to a brand new, life-giving, Christ-loving heart. I totally believe that it is only Jesus that can do those things. But I also believe in law. And the reason that we have law is because we are not always waiting around for everyone to get saved to be able to shape and mold their behavior. In fact, most of our laws are to be able to understand what, what people's proclivity might be to engaging in evil with or without Jesus and trying to put up barriers to either prevent that or discourage that kind of behavior. So when it comes to the question of what am I creating? Well, are you a boss? Are you a content creator? Are you a teacher? Are you a business owner? You have the ability to create. You have the ability to create diversity in your staff. You have the ability to create um, different voices and, and racial diversity is helpful. I mean, you look at where we are in West Pasco County with like 92% white uh, in West Pasco County, I mean, if we had a church of 50-50, I, I don't know, I think I'd retire because it would be the greatest thing ever. That'd be really difficult. But your business, your staff, your church should look in the same level of diversity at least as the area around and then hopefully moves to an even greater level of diversity because you're kingdom people. But you, if you have any kind of authority and leadership there, you don't have to wait. Are you bringing up voices of multiple generations into the conversation. Uh, you know, are there rooms where it is only men in these places? What are you creating? Because a lot of us have the ability to create different environments for, for people to experience the grace and mercy and the truth of Jesus, even if they're not hearing it preached, but they're seeing it in the way that we're building a kingdom reflective organization. And the second thing is, what do you allow? We have to wrestle with this when it comes to the way that we vote, when it comes to our civic engagement. Um, and we have to make sure that we're educated here and not just angry. Education and anger are not <laughs> the same thing. I mean, hopefully you understand they're not the same thing, but sometimes they can get mixed up in the two. We have to ask ourselves those questions. Christians for, a, for forever have lobbied that we need a president who will put in certain justices so that abortion can be outlawed. Uh, but I think that it would be completely agreed upon that the only thing that's going to stop the desire, that's only going to stop the provision of abortion. It's not going to perhaps stop the desire for it. That can only come at the heart level. However, that has not, that has not stopped Christians from pursuing, from the very highest position, legal and organizational change because they know that there have to be guidelines for people who don't have the heart of Christ. It doesn't stop us from evangelism and it doesn't stop us from voting. It is not either or. It is not one or the other. It is both of these working in concert together. And so as Christians, uh, when it comes to matters of, of gerrymandering or housing principles or law enforcement practices or church staffing or school boards, anything like that, you might say, I, I can't allow these practices to take place. And again, I'm hoping that's done after research and evaluation and listening and not just a lashing out of, of anger. Well, that would make sense. We have responsibilities to, to play a part in, in civic responsibility. It doesn't mean that we only have to stay at the individual level. And it would be foolish for us to only stay at high level organizational level, especially as Christians, and not try to be able to match and change the heart of mankind. But we should be able to do both. So those are the two questions and the two levels that I'm using to try to evaluate how I can help. 
on a personal level. What am I creating and what am I allowing? And at an organizational level, what am I creating and what am I allowing? Again, I don't think it's a perfect solution. I'm not trying to say we built everything perfect. I'm, I'm constantly trying to learn and grow in this. But those are the two helpful questions that I've been thinking through to try to evaluate how I might be able to grow as a person, as a father, a husband, and as a pastor to be able to see the kingdom of God more fully expressed on earth as it is in heaven.